Hi there, Chris, Chap in the Cap, Motor Legends. Today I'm going to talk to you about a helmet from German brand Schubert. It's a C4, it's the C4 Basic. So the helmet that I'm gonna be talking about today is the C4 Basic, this helmet. Now, it's not a brand new helmet, and we're recording this towards the end of November 2020. The helmet was released much earlier in the year. But, frankly, it's not a helmet that is much discussed. It's not been much advertised, so you may never have heard of it before. It is, in essence, a down specs version of this helmet, which is the C4 Pro. But it occurs to me that this is probably not a bad time because it can be a little bit confusing. Now it's not a bad time to just talk through very briefly the Schuberth flip lid range. Flip lid range. Right, this is the C3 Basic. It was the C3. It was the helmet that almost created this category. When they replaced it with the slightly upgraded C3 Pro, they renamed this the C3 Basic. They took it down to three rather boring colors. They took out the pin lock. They reduced the price. That enabled them to market a premier version um, and a basic version. C3 Pro is a fantastic helmet. It's been a favorite of police forces for many years, a favorite of, of ours. I suppose in truth, if I was being cruel, it was a favorite until the Neotech 2 came along and that's become, for many people, the go-to flip lid. What Schubert did a couple of years ago was introduce this helmet, which is the C4. Now, even though it had a higher number, it was never actually designed to replace the C3. A lot of people just assumed that this was a better upgraded version of the C3. But actually the C4 was designed to appeal to a slightly more sporting rider. It's a beautiful, sleek looking helmet. Once it's on, it doesn't look like a flip lid at all. One of the key features, however, the reason that it was slightly more sporting is that it's got a larger visor, wider visor and a taller visor. So the idea was when you were leant forward on the bike a little bit, because you had a taller visor, you didn't have to crook your neck as much to see down the road. Similarly, if you are on a lean forward bike, it's hard to do a lifesaver. So the fact that you had a wider visor meant that you had better peripheral vision. You didn't have to turn quite as much to see what was behind you. The problem, with the C4 was that when they launched it, there were lots of faults. It was a helmet that was beset by different issues. A number of those issues, we've gone over them before. If you wanna check out what those were, just for a historical perspective, you can, but it was a helmet that just didn't work. It hadn't been tested to the degree that maybe it should have been, and it didn't work the way it should. What they then did was introduce about a year later, a new helmet, the C4 Pro. And this helmet, I suppose, technically is now the top of the range helmet. There are still many people because the C3 Pro is ongoing. There are still many people who prefer the C3 Pro. Long in the tooth as it is, it's a well-proven helmet and it just doesn't tend, tend to go wrong. C4 doesn't really anymore either, but there are schools of thought. Some people are more in the camp of the C3, some in the camp of the C4 Pro. Now, the key selling feature of the C4 Pro when it came out, or one of the key selling features other than its larger visor, was its integrated comms. And it was indeed a very clever system. You got here a little button mic, so you didn't have to install the comms. You had a button mic here, you had the speakers already installed, and all you did, you bought a pack that had a brains module, as it were, and a battery model. You took these clips off, you put the units in there, and basically you were then good to go. But the issue is that not everybody wants to ride around with comms, and therefore not everybody wants to pay for features and stuff that they're never going to need. So that's why they decided to bring out another helmet without the comms, and that is basically what the C4 Basic is. So let me get rid of these. Thankfully, it's a good catch. Anyway, so this is the C4 Basic. Now, because Schubert have taken the comms out, so you don't have the button microphone, you don't have the speakers, they've been able to bring this to market at a hundred pounds cheaper. So for example, the white version of the C4 Basic is 450 pounds. If you go for the C4 Pro with all the comms in, you're paying an extra hundred pounds, you're paying 550. Now, one of the issues that came out of this exercise was that the basic was actually a quieter helmet. Nobody at Schubert had 
done it for that reason. That wasn't what they set out to do. Nobody in the marketing department thought, how do we go and create the quietest helmet in the market? It's just a lucky byproduct. And the reason being that noise in a helmet is often created by, by holes in the helmet. Anywhere that there's an aperture or some kind of space, like here in the visor, um, this, this area where the visor goes into, that creates noise. And in these areas here, when you took these clips off, you had a space in there for the battery and the brains. Those areas would create noise. So when they took the comms out and filled those areas in with foam, that foam absorbs the noise, it made this the quietest helmet on the market. So this was not done as a clever piece of marketing. The reason this helmet was actually produced was it enabled them to produce a helmet that was cheaper for police forces. Now, the issue with police forces is that they don't use Senna Bluetooth comms. They have their own radio systems. So the comms that's built into this helmet, and it's a fabulous helmet, the comms were of no use to them. So it made sense for Shubath to take the comms out to offer it to the police because the police force, like a lot of organizations, I'm not saying they're cheap, but they like to get good value for money. There was no point in having the comms. So Shubath taking this comms out meant that they could offer a cheaper helmet to the police force. That was the real rationale behind the C4 Basic. The reduction in noise levels was, I've got to say, just a lucky byproduct. So like the C4 Pro, the C4 Basic has a glass fiber matrix shell. Now, there is a carbon fiber version in the C4 range, but a glass fiber matrix is kind of what you would expect, I think, in a helmet like this. The reality is that you do not buy a flip lid because you want to save weight. You buy a flip lid because you want to enjoy the many benefits that they bring. So for example, if you're in town and you want to talk to someone or go into a petrol station, you can just lift the flip lid up. If you're riding in very hot conditions and you want to get a bit of air, you can just put it up, get a bit of air in and then close it down again. That's the reason you buy one. You don't buy it for the weight. Now looking at this helmet in particular, just want to go over some of the features. What you don't get, that you get with, for example, the Neotech 2, you do not get a lock position. Now, a lock position means that technically a flip lid helmet is classified to be used in the open face and the closed face position. You don't get that on any Shuba at present, but in reality, I don't think that's a problem as long as you're only ever riding, say, up to 20 miles an hour. We often see police riders in town wearing C3s, wearing C4s, and they've got the, the flip lid up. You wouldn't want to do much more than that, but I don't think in reality you're ever going to get stopped if you're crawling along in traffic and you've got the flip of the helmet up. The things you do get, you get a drop-down sun visor, you get an optical quality grade one external visor, you've got good chin and brow vents, you've got a Velcro chin curtain, part of the rationale, as we all know, of a flipped helmet as it's quieter, so the chin curtain is an important part of that. You've got the micrometric adjustable strap. You've got things like these along the top of the visor. These are called turbulators and are meant to stop any whistling on the helmet. You've also got a system that's pretty much unique to Schubert. It's called the Aros system. It's a way of tying the neck straps to the back of the helmet. So in essence, whatever happens, this helmet really cannot come off because if you stretch it, it pulls you back into the helmet. It cannot come off accidentally. Now, quietness. This helmet, we've already mentioned, it's the quietest helmet on the market. And I'm going over this again only because it has a relevance to what I'm going to talk about with regard to the C4 Basic. Now, the reason that a helmet is quiet and the reason that a flip lid is quiet is that it has this very tight neck roll. And when you've got a tight neck roll and you can have a tight neck roll on a flip lid because we pull it down over the head, over the back of the head, it doesn't have to stretch over the wide part of the head. That means we're gonna have this tight neck roll. And that means the air cannot get in. And that is fantastic because it means that the helmet is quiet. Because when air comes into a helmet and reaches the ears, that translates as noise, obviously. But there is a downside to that. And the downside is that if this air can't easily get in, then air cannot easily get out. So if you're riding in the winter in cold conditions, a flip lid helmet has a slightly greater propensity to fog up because you've got this cold oncoming air as you're riding along at 70 miles an hour on the motorway. You've got your hot breath. That difference in temperatures creates condensation. So because the air cannot easily escape out of the bottom of the helmet because it's so well sealed, you can get 
slightly premature condensation. It's the same on all flip lids, or rather all good quality flip lids. What you need to do is make sure that you've got the vents open, you need the chin vent open to allow cold air in, and you need the top vent open so that that pulls the, the air out. It means the air is dry, there's always a, a clean flow of air. The other thing that you need in a good quality flip lid is the best pin lock. You need a 120 pin lock. And this is where I have my greatest criticism of this helmet. I'm simply appalled that Schubert have fitted this helmet with a 70 pin lock. Now, one of the problems, and I've alluded to it already, the C4 when it came out had a number of problems. One of the biggest problems was that they had fitted a cheap look-alike pin lock. It wasn't even a proper pin lock and it just didn't work. The visor on this helmet is very large and it just wasn't man enough to clear it in extreme conditions. They did upgrade it eventually to a 120 pin lock and anyone who had bought from us a C4 Pro, we sent them an upgraded pin lock 120 and we were grateful that Schubert did this. Given their experience, I'm just amazed that somebody at Schubert decided we got away with that let's take it down a notch again, let's supply this helmet with a 70 pin lock. I just asked myself, why would you do that? What can they be saving on this helmet? 50 cents, a dollar at most. To me, unless these guys just love risk taking, I don't understand it. Now, if I'm, if I'm being fair, I've got to say that this is a theoretical position rather than an actual one. It just hasn't been cold enough so far this year, because we're having a fairly mild autumn and early winter, I've not been out, or we have not been out in this helmet in cold enough conditions to see whether the 70 pin lock is up to the job. But I've got to say that putting a 70 pin lock just leaves a bit of a bitter taste in the mouth. It doesn't inspire confidence, because when you buy a Shui, you just know that Shui are not going to cut any corners. They're going to do the best to give you the very best performance. And the fact that you look at this helmet and go, Schubert have tried to cut corners here, it leads you to believe or wonder, have they made any compromises elsewhere? So what I would say is if you go for this helmet because it's the quietest helmet on the market and you don't want the comms, you have to bear in mind that at some point, if you do get fogging, I mean, I'm not saying you will, but if you do get fogging, you're gonna be in for an extra 30 pounds for a Pinlock 120. Looking at some other things, you've got the thicker liner in this that when they upgraded the C4 to the C4 Pro, that helmet, one of the other issues with it was that it was a little bit noisy. So they put in this thicker lining. It's a beautiful, luxurious lining. It's much thicker. And the nature of the lining, the way it's put, put together, because it's kind of velvet lined, it absorbs noise. It's one of the reasons that um, it was because of this lining that they were able to reduce the noise levels from the C4 to the C4 Pro. But one of the things that you need to bear in mind is that this lining is a much thicker lining than on the C4 Pro. So this makes the helmet a bit smaller. So if you are going for a C4 Basic or even a C4 Pro, you're not necessarily gonna be the same size as you would have been in a C3 or a C3 Pro. You need to try it because it just, it fits one size smaller. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is comms because this doesn't have comms. And we've had a number of customers in the shop who've said, that's great because I'd like to fit my <coughs> my Senna or my Cardo comms onto this helmet. Now, it can be done, but one of the issues is, because of the way this neck roll was designed, because it takes the battery and the brains area here, it's a very thick piece of plastic here. It is very difficult. You cannot clamp a comms onto the outside here. Now, anyway, with a flip lid, whenever you put a comms on, it has to go around the back here, because obviously you've got the, the crack here in the side of the helmet, but, a combination of back here, and here you can see it's very wide. You can do it. The only way that you can do it is instead of clamping the comms on, you have to stick it on with the sticky pads. It can be done, but I've got to say it's a wee bit messy because it means that you've got wires hanging down here. We've, we've done it for, for customers, but it's not a pretty sight. If that's the way you want to go, fine, but my view would be that if you really want comms, go for a C4 Pro. So I've gone through most of the issues, the features of the C4 Basic, but a quick run through before you take the leap. Now, like the C4 Pro, it's a super sleek, stylish and sporty looking helmet. It looks much more like a full face than, say, the Neotech. I have to assure you that the C4 range is now fully sorted. All those problems we had in the early days of the C4, we no longer have them. That was now over a year ago, 
Initially, we got a lot of those helmets back with people saying this has fallen off, this doesn't work. That just doesn't happen now. This helmet is fully sorted. Everything it works as it should. It's totally reliable. And of course, this has the benefit. Technically, this is the quietest helmet on the market. It's £100 cheaper than the C4 Pro, and that makes it about £70 cheaper than the Neotech. Bear in mind, you might in extremis need to pay an extra £30 for a pin lock. Now, as I've said, I'm disappointed with the pin lock 70, and I have to assure you, if there wasn't such a paucity of hair, under this cap, right now I'd be pulling it out. But my problem with this helmet is not fully established because we haven't ridden in it to make sure that there is a problem. So if you never want comms or you want to put on for whatever reason, all of your mates have got cardo, if you definitely don't want to go center and you want to put a cardo comms on the outside of the helmet, then this is the helmet in the Schubert range to go for. It's a great helmet, it's a good price, especially given the quality of a helmet like this. Personally, I think Schubert shouldn't have called this the basic helmet that makes it sound like it's entry level and at 400 pounds, it's not an entry level helmet. And actually it's a top of the line helmet. It's an excellent helmet. So if you'd like to see the full range of Schubert helmets then visit the website motolegends.com. If you'd like to learn more about the C4 Basic, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you directly to the relevant page on the website. There you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail, you can check out availability, and of course if you want one of the helmets you can buy one there and then. Now, we try to make the buying process as simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free and what's more we give you a full 12 months in which to decide where you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise or price guarantee in the business even better than John Lewis's. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anybody selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. In the future, if you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up, click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. If, however, you prefer to get your information video graphically, that is to say in this form, we'd be delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2020, back end of 2020, back end of November 2020, in just a month's time, just before the end of the year, just before Christmas, we're going to be pulling a draw to give away a motorbike. We are calling it a Steve McQueen tribute bike. We're going to give it to one of our YouTube subscribers. It's a lovely little machine. It's a lovely little cutie. It's based on a Mutt 125cc bike. You can read all about it on the front page of our website or on the home page of our YouTube channel. Finally, I'd like to say a few words about our fabulous little shop here in Guildford. We're based about a mile from the centre of town, a mile from the railway station. As I've said, it's a fairly small shop, it's got a small footprint, but outside of the warehouse, the warehouse that is attached to the shop, there's more than two million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. Technically that makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the country. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're about service, we're about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to taste one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.